Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 17 in our series, Getting Started with Rails 7. So if we look at our, oops, our guide here, we've been going through the Rails Getting Started guide. And we're kind of between section nine here on refactoring and section 10 on deleting comments. So going through what we've done previously, we created a new Rails application called Blog. We started with the um, articles index kind of as a hello world sort of um, page. And then we went through the seven RESTful actions, index show, new create, edit, update, and destroy on article. We went through and quickly showed how you can get the equivalent of that using the Rails scaffold generator. And then we added a second model called comment that is associated with kind of a child of article. So uh, an article can have many comments. Each comment belongs to an article. And we've gone through that. And then in the past few videos, we've been doing some refactoring of repeated code and uh, anti-patterns that we've had uh, in our uh, sections here. And uh, so that the last kind of section of uh, refactoring we're going to do before we move on is refactoring our our Rails tests. So this getting started guide ha doesn't really incorporate testing into it. We've been using a test-driven development uh, method as much as we can throughout this guide. Uh, so the uh, there is because there the guide hasn't covered refactoring tests. We're going to kind of stop here in this at the end of this refactoring section and do some refactoring of our own tests. So the we're going to start here with the uh, the article test and the comment test. And there are some things like uh, should be valuable, valid and creatable with correct um, attributes. And we've got this assertion that our comment is valid. We've got this assertion that our uh, our article that we chose is valid. But uh, in reality, I want to have a test that all of our fixtures are valid, not just the one that we chose. And so we're going to take a look at the the test helper method here that we've got. And uh, we're going to um, to go in and add a helper method into that um, that test helper that will allow us to check the fixtures, all the fixtures for a given model. So I'll paste in what I've got here, and then we'll we'll talk um, through it. So we've got this run model fixtures fixture tests. We're going to take uh, class name, and you can see I, I spelled class with a K here. That's fairly common because class um, is a, a reserved word in Ruby. So often when you're dealing with a class name like this, we're going to um, to use that as our um, kind of stand-in so that you can still tell it's a class, but not that it so that you don't wind up with ambiguity here. So um, and I'll add in, make this a little bit better looking to read because it's falling off of the um, edge of the screen there. So we're going to go through each of these and assert that the model record is valid. Um, and then if it fails, this is our failure message. Um, it tells us which, um, which fixture it is and what the, um, what the messages are for that. So We'll go in and we'll add this to our article test and our comment test. And then we'll call this helper method. article, do 
the same thing for comment. And then we can get rid of the existing here. So run the move this to the top. after our setup method. And we'll get rid of existing. And then do the same thing here. Uh, we need to make sure that we're doing this on comment. All of our fixtures are valid. I'll go in and make some of our fixtures invalid temporarily. Make that a comment. And then in our comments YAML, we'll make both of those temporarily commented. Actually, that's not going to work because we're going to have a, we're not even going to make it that far because of the foreign key constraint. So we'll keep that. But these should now have two failures. So status is not included in the list. Public count matches number of records. So we commented that out, that started failing, and then status is not included in the list. So we can see here. Uh, invalid comment fixture um, and our um, invalid comment fixture and then it gives the information and then the information about the errors for that for both the comments and the articles. We'll go in now and make these Turn these back so that they pass. Run all of our tests. We're back to passing here. So now let's take a look at, so we've got this, um, um, active support test case here and um, we've got a lot of now uh, repeated information about should be invalid with bad status should be um, uh, false true if archived false if not archived um, and um, public count so all those things are essentially duplicated across article and comments. So let's see, going along the same lines, if we can do something like what we did in our um, in our concern here, um, and refactor some of that repeated code out into a uh, a test helper module. So I'm going to go in here and uh, create a subdirectory of test. Now I've got this support here. We will create a file here. Call visible test helpers dot rb, and we'll make this a module. like we did in visible, 
we're going to extend active support concern here. Let's see if we can at least get this included properly. So I might have to do some require or require relative sort of stuff. Uh, we'll see whether this works or not. So I'm going to go into article test and try to include visible test helpers. Do the same thing in comment test. And see if that breaks anything. Uninitialized constant. So let's see if we can um, name error here. Let's um, see if we can include this in our test helper. Now I've got that uninitialized constant there. Let's see if we can add in a Still failing. Cannot load such file. All right, so we're back to passing. We'll see now if we can. So we've got. 36 runs, 149 assertions. Let's see if we can keep that consistent. So we're going to see what we can do about our repeated status items here. So we'll go into visible test helpers, create bad status, our valid status, our status inclusion. So we've removed it from there. Save there. And see if that's getting us to... Oh, we are getting nils here, because we haven't called that method. back to passing so that worked we were able to refactor out our um, setting of those instance variables and now the these tests should
work as long as we have, um, so instead of comment, um, we might need um, something like a, um, a test uh, subject or something like that instance variable that we use um, to get these working. So should be invalid with bad status, should be archive should be true if archived, uh, archive should be false if not archived, and public count matches number of public records. So we'll get these into our visible test helpers. I believe this is going to fail because we need to use an included block here. It's the wrong number of arguments given one expected two for our tests here. Some of these are going to fail because we've got the co commenter and comment aren't in scope for what we've got here. So we're going to so we're still failing already defined in comments test. So that's OK. So we've got in this case the comment and then we've got information about the the information with the the status associated to it. So let's see if we can get this working in such a way that it's um, consistent for us. So we're going to um, take a look. At, so we've got this comment.new here. Um, we're going to make a private method here. comment so valid we want all valid stuff here and then we'll change it to make things invalid so comment equals get new comment and then comment.status equals bad status Check that back out and make sure I didn't break anything outside of these. So I'm going to do a block comment temporarily. Let's see where that gets us on the comment test. So that's still passing. 
Now we'll go in and make this status new the get new comment status existing will be comment here and then we'll do something similar for articles And then we need to create this get new article. valid version first. And then we'll do our deviations from that. So that we are change that make that an empty string article instance variable and then let's see where that gets us for our all our models here and we're passing so now this has given us the ability to take this set of tests here Public count. Equal 
one for article. Two for comment. We'll go in here now and start making these more generic. So instead of article, this is going to be status new. This will be status existing. And this will all be status existing. This is status existing. And then our equal there will be our public count. just do self here. It's probably not going to work, but we'll give it a shot, a shot here. So now we should be able to get rid of all these. We already got rid of them in article, get rid of the status related assertions see where that gets us and we got two errors and I, ble I believe they're both going to be related to the public count no method error so Need to go similar to what we did with the um, run model fixture name here. So we'll go in and add a Last name here, and then we just need to um, to do that with our in our setup of the two um, items there. And then use that there.
back to passing. Run all tests now. That is working. And then let's take a look at our articles controller test, will be the last thing we take a look at for now. So here we're starting to get kind of um, um, cumbersome in our, I guess, new and create if we wanted to. Um, so we'll similar to here. Same thing for actually, we might not even need the yeah, form error assertion, so we don't need the um, the items there. form assertions there. And then this will allow us to go in and be a little bit more detailed about our, um, so I'm going to create another private method here called make that call it here in article form assertions. pause and do this. So we'll have that here. We'll call it from the article form assertions. Then we can also call it in show here. Because they'll be the same set of status options there. And run our tests got the increased number of assertions. Take a look at what we've got for committing what we, our code. So we've added in the status option assertions, um, article form assertions, refactor some of that repeated code a bit. We made some of our um, we made our status related tests on our model more uh, modular by cr creating a, um, a test helper module for our um, our visible concern uh, which allowed us to get rid of several of our shared and similar assertions between article and comment um, and then we added a uh, class method to um, 
allow for the um, making sure that our assertions are um, are valid for us. So, or making sure our fixtures are valid for us. So we can add all that in. And I didn't go and refactor out every last possible thing that you could. There are still, even our views, those um, statuses that we're listing out, we could use the constant for those. And there are a couple other things, but uh, for the purposes of this uh, guide, we're already kind of um, adding on to what's there. So I think we'll, we'll call it here, write our commit message. So we've got our commit message. We will push to the remote and call it there. We'll pick up with section 10 of the guide in our next episode. Thanks for sticking around. This is the, the longest episode so far, but hopefully if you've been following along with the tests, it uh, provides you with some some help and um, ideas for what you might do in your own projects. Want to create your own Ruby gem but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft.